So this next video has to do with my um, what was it 2018 Nissan Leaf battery pack. This is I believe the Generation Two. It's these they come not as Generation One did as a, this is a single unit, but they're they're actually sort of combined two units. So sharp-eyed observers will notice that there's 48 um, modules but I only need to use 42 if I'm going to use six chunks of seven individual cells and they aren't even individual cells because they're little cells inside of that but let's just for now I'm using 42 of these alright um, I have configured these a little different than the way they were in the car this was one chunk in the car um, but th th this pack were a little different to kind of fit into the car and I reconfigured them so they're they'll go on the wall better and so I could use these plates to make sure they were all compressed the way they need to be compressed now now again because I just have not seen many videos or any videos using this pack I'm kinda making this up as I go along I've got a box full of all the wiring harnesses that uh, came off the top of these batteries and I'm gonna try to reconfigure these to make them, to set them up so they're in the seven cell configurations that I need. And you can see it's still lit out of balance. That first one is 3.92, 3.91, 3.94, 3.93. So it did get a little bit unbalanced and later in another video I'll show you how I go about getting these all balanced before we start using them. These use these kind of connectors, which I just bought off of eBay. And what I found after trial and error was that you're not going to use the red and the black. So here are the remaining wires, and they go black, green, orange. There's a jumper between here, and then nothing there. And then we've got yellow and white will get me the right readouts on these meters. So you can see according to the Hobby King, I've got a uh, total for that uh, chunk, 15.66 uh, volts, uh, 3.92, 3.93, 3 3.95, 3 3.85. Now I don't think this Hobby King is necessarily very reliable because I had that same issue with using it on the Chevy Volt Pack. Um, the other option is this thing here. And you can see this is cycling through all four. Three point, okay. So 15.7 for the pack, 0 0.93, 0 0.94, 0 0.94, and 0.93. So these, this battery set up here is really quite balanced. And I think if I plug this into this, I'm going to get the same thing. I think it's the meter that's off and not, not the batteries becoming unbalanced. But these little things, and I bought, uh, there's a couple of different versions of it, like this and this, and I bought, let's see, I bought a bunch of them, I bought 15 of them. Um, they're like three bucks a piece, and they also have an audible alarm if it drops below a certain value, so that will tell me if one, since all these will be on all the time, they really don't take any power. It'll tell me that at a glance that they're all basically balanced. And it'll also make an alarm if it either if anything gets too high or too low. So the reason I'm not going to use BMS on this pack is, is there's a few reasons. One, I, I don't think one exists yet for this system. The ones that do exist for the Gen 1 are fairly expensive, 100 dollars per array of seven um, so they're kind of expensive um, I don't think they're necessary and I have some ideas on what to do in the alternative I have been using this battery pack up here for like five years and I don't have BMS battery management system on it I run it fairly conservative parameters so right now it top it's topping out at like 48.45 volts and then I run it down um, this will cut off at 42 volts 
um, which isn't stressing it out at all. All right, um, I showed these calculations in my last video, but um, fully charged, I believe, each of these packs can has the potential of 8.4 volts. So that when I say these packs, it's half of the pack. And so if you combine seven of these 8.4s together, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you get a roughly 58.8 volts, which will be the right number to run a 48 volt inverter like the one that I'm currently using over here that's making all this noise um, with my Chevy Volt array. Okay, we're getting someplace. I, these remaining three um, start here with a positive and it goes through here, goes across over here, up here and over this way and here's your negative. So there's positive and negative for those three or six cells it's just taken a few hours and we're getting all these little monitors connected uh, the good news is that they're all reading the same that is 15.7 for all and then 3.94 or thereabouts 3.96 on some of them we'll, we'll adjust those later Ah, all right. Okay, that only took three days. Oh, we got all, <laughs> probably have to clean this up just a bit before we get it finished, but we've got our monitors now connected to all of our banks. And got them all pretty balanced. Got all my positive and negative wires hooked on here uh so we're gonna run well let's see do i have them all oh, i guess i don't have am I missing one over here i feel like i might be missing one over here but more or less we've got these all hooked up so we're getting pretty close i've tested my voltage across here i'm getting 51 volts let's see i got the inverter turned on and now let's plug in our system ha! and we have lights okay now I think we can turn the charge controller on I got to put the cover back on all right I reset the parameters of this uh, my calculation is that the battery pack can be charged up to a maximum of 57.4 volts and that's fairly conservative that's 4.1 volts per cell and I think you can actually go to 4.2. Um, I have it set right now for 56 volts, 56 volts. So let's just take it easy, see how we do. I'm gonna draw it down uh, charging my car tonight and then we'll start over in the morning and see how we're doing. Oh, this thing, this is strange. They're all going off. Oh boy, oh, dear God. Okay, all right, all right, all right, Jesus. <laughs> um, I don't know why, so we're down to 40 volts. We can go down as far as 35, so we're fine. 2.5 volts. I don't remember what that was, but I don't know why it's used so much power. All right, so we have the car plugged in, and it it put only 10 kilowatts in. So 10, uh, that's not very much, but certainly not 30. Uh, there's something odd and scary, not scary, but uh, bad <laughs> that's going on here. Uh, clearly, um, this charge of these batteries is not linear. I got home yesterday and had plugged the car in. I was charging it at a, about 1100 watts and it said 48 volts up here 
and then I came out a half an hour later and it was it had dropped to 46 um, and alarms were running. Yeah, you can see that's popped up to 2.6. I had marked this cell right here because this had dropped to 1.3, I think. And this one down here, which is also popped back up really quick. Uh, let's see, what's it at? This one down here earlier this morning was down at one volt. And I double checked it with my fluke meter, so it actually was. So there's a, I don't, and now it seems to have balanced itself again. And, and the same with this one. And then there was one more uh, up here, I think. And it may be that there are a couple, of, like this cell, this pouch is bad. And maybe that pouch is bad because it just um, drained all of a sudden. I've got extra here that I can fill in and replace those. But um, I need to figure out what's going on first. Now I'm just trying to charge it up slowly and see what happens if it rebalances or what. And then figure out the discharge cycle. But that's where I'm at right now. Uh, I just want to show you that it went from 43 volts to... 47.7 .7, and it put one kilowatt in there so there's like no energy between 48 and 43 cells that were unbalanced are getting more balanced as we go along and the voltage is coming up super fast with these packs much faster than it does when they're full um, I don't know if that's good or not it certainly doesn't mean everything's fine, especially on these cells down here that were down around one and a half volts. That's not good. Um, but we'll see if as we charge it up, if they come back in line and figure out what to do then. This is strange. So even this cell right here, which was in the like 1.2 or 3 volts earlier, if I look at it now, it's 3.4 which is exactly what each of its neighbors are at. Um, completely, and that's the same thing with all the rest of them. They've all balanced out exactly, but I know there's something up with that cell. Another event this weekend, uh, my neighbor called to say all the alarms are going off and I had them come over and unplug them. They weren't really that low. The whole pack was at like 49 volts and none of them were below three volts but they were all going off or they had started going off maybe they had charged up again but um, one thing I'm noticing when I plug these all in if you see the first two are 140 to 349 350 and then the next two are up in the 60s the high 60s so there's like a 2.2 voltage gap and that's kind of consistent across Across all of these, the first two seem to be in the 40s, and then the other two seem to be in the 60s. And I'm not sure what's up with that. I'm going to just verify that with my multimeter, but um, something I need to look into. I'm beginning to wonder if I really can pull this off without active battery management. I'm going to, there's a, I've identified a couple of really bad cells here. When they get low, they go way low. And I'm going to use some of the ones up here that I'm not using for anything else to circumvent those and see if that helps any. But let's end this video here and we'll pick it up again after some more experimentation.